Welcome back to Lessons Learned. I'm Sherry, and we are going to have a tag along video today. If you want to tag along with me, it's very windy as you can see. Woo! I don't know what's going on with the wind, but it is March, right? What do they say about that? March winds bring. No, in like a lion, out like a lamb. I think we're going out like a lamb. That's what's going on. Well, I'm headed up to the she shed first, and I want to talk to you about some stuff. And why we're going to go on a little trip in the car today. And all that good stuff. You get to see some of my landscape around there. Not too bad. It seems like every time I do one of these, it's, it's not sunny. I don't know. I, I just can't seem to get you a sunny day. All right, let's go in the she shed. So I've started putting the finishing work on pressed flowers here. I started this last night, so I'm using a, a grunge dot. I think that will kind of complement this white somewhat and tie in some of the, I don't know. This has a little bit of a cream blotched in it. You know how grunge is. I'm hoping it will kind of bring the blocks together doing that and then um, I'm using a, a gray for those center you know where they all meet here and you wind up with a four inch block here it's kind of a gray floral that I'm using so I am actually putting them on like this they're 10 inch squares and you put two on and then iron those and then put two more here's the here's the fabric I'm using for the the center this part right here so when we come back today I might work some more on these you can hang out with me for that and then I also want to show you something I'm working on for someone that is requiring that I go out today and find something. So let's talk about that. So this is a denim romper type thing. And the person who brought me this wants me to put some embellishments on it. Like on these pockets, something here, something here, and then maybe something on a a back pocket and then she also wants me to put something around the back edge here so what she brought me to do that with is this so this is a very old tattered stained threadbare quilt that she's had in her possession for a long time it has been repaired a few times, looks like, over the years with some zigzag stitch. I don't know if you can see that. Kind of got a shadow there. There's some zigzag on those rings. It's like a double wedding ring in pastel colors. And I like her idea. And I will come up with something on that. She also wants me to make a headband out of it, like a hairband, headband thing. Um, yeah, but that's not the hard part. She also wants me to make out of the rest of this a little kind of tie front jacket. I'll put a picture of that right here. Uh, she sent this from Pinterest or somewhere, and uh, of course... You know, she would be wearing a t-shirt under that because it's all open front. But I need, before I start cutting into this, to put the appliques on the pockets and such. I need to know how much of this quilt I will need for that little jacket. So, we're going to go to Joann's today and see if I can find a pattern. So, there will be some pattern book gazing and such. And I don't know, I'm just not real good at making up clothing patterns myself. I don't trust myself. So I want to see if I can find a pattern that's close to that. Okay. 
Okay, I'm in the car now, so buckle up. We're getting ready to go over to Clarksville, Indiana, which is probably about 10 minutes from here. We've not been together on this trek before, but it is the back way. We're going to take the back way. All right, so let's go. The road was closed. So much for the shortcut. See all this traffic? That's what I was trying to avoid. Oh well. Probably would only save me a minute or two anyway. We have arrived. I don't think I'm going to have a microphone on when I go in there. So if I do say anything to you while I'm in the store, hopefully you can hear it. If not, we'll just take a silent trip through the store. Probably when I'm looking at the pattern books, I will be able to talk to you close to the phone. So you'll be able to hear me. Um, a story about our Joann's. It recently moved from another location to this location, which is much, much bigger. And I think that was the end, towards the end in the fall of last year. And the other store was much smaller. And, you know, they could use to have gone to a bigger place. However, okay, so when they first opened this new store, it was beautiful. They had it so well stocked and organized and plenty of help. You know how it is when they open a new store. Any business opens a new store. It's packed with people and packed with product and, you know, it's your, your dream store. It didn't take but about two months for that, this store to get in quite the disarray. So I don't know what this store is going to look like. I don't know if they're in trouble like some of the rest of them are, but we're going to go in and take a look and hopefully they'll have patterns on sale and I'll be able to find a pattern like that picture I showed you. So let's go in.
So I thought this top would be good. Um, it has the tie feature on the sleeves and I could leave this open and do the ties. And that would be fairly simple. She was wanting that peplum down here though, which I could create that. I don't know. I looked in the cabinet and I don't, they don't have this one. So I'd have to get it online or somewhere else. Here's another one that might work. I don't know about the gathered neck though, but I could definitely open the front of it and then do the peplum as well. See if they have that one. So they didn't have the Butterick one. So now I'm looking in New Look. New Look? Is that what this is called? Yeah, New Look. I've never used a New Look pattern. That's beyond my garment sewing days. But I found this one and I was thinking that I could make the little ruffle here and make the little peplum down here. Just shorten this part and then make a wider band down here gather it, put it on, open it here. So I'm going to see if they have this one. Six, four, three, four. So evidently New Look does not have drawers. So how do you, how do you find patterns in all this mess? I even went through some of these boxes right here. I don't know what's going on. Good grief, Charlie Brown. I think they used to be down here. Or oh, here's some on the end. Some here. But not the one I'm looking for. <sighs> okay, that did not go so well. Um, every pattern I picked out, there was not one. And even the ones that were questionable for me to use for that jacket, I don't know. I don't know if I could get them to adapt. So I would like to maybe go online and see if I can find that very first pattern that I found. That was a blouse, a very simple blouse. And then I could do what I need to do to it to suit her style that she's after. So I basically just need some place to start and I can't do that on my own. I have to have some sort of pattern to guide me because pattern pieces aren't necessarily the same size as the finished garment. You know, you have darts and maybe pleats and, you know, things like that that make the pattern pieces look different when it's not sewn together yet. So that's what I'm after. Anyway, any of you who've sewn clothes, you know what I'm talking about. But um, I think now, I didn't buy anything else while I was in there. I didn't, I don't need anything. I don't, I didn't want to browse, really. Um, I think I'm going to go over to Panera Bread and get me a, an unsweet tea. Let's go. I just can't catch a break today. <laughs> I decided I would get an iced coffee, but they don't have any sugar-free syrups. So I went ahead and ordered my unsweet tea, and it is $4. Yes, it's a large. I asked for extra ice, which means I'm not going to get the same amount of tea. So, oh well. This is the way things are now. After this, I'm going to go to the beauty supply store and pick up a couple things. I may or may not take you there uh, inside, but I'll let you know what I get. Yes, Cosmoprof. It's a wholesale beauty supply. I am a licensed nail tech. I worked as a nail tech for 18 years and I keep my license up even though I'm not working with that now so I can come in here and get my hair products for myself or anybody else that asks me don't ask me <laughs> no sometimes I do it for close friends 
Um, so I'm going to go in and grab my dry shampoo that I'm out of. Be right back. Mission accomplished. They only have the little bitty 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 one. This is what I like. Amica Perk Up Dry Shampoo. I love the way it smells and it does the job. And I also got some clarifying shampoo, Paul Mitchell, because you just need to get the gunk out once in a while from the dry shampoo. <laughs> and I got a little thing of apricot and clementine moisturizer. And it smells so good. Apricot and clementine. Mm, it smells really good. I like citrus smells for lotions and things like that. Okay, so I halfway thought maybe I would go to Hobby Lobby and check out their patterns, but I'm kind of tired already. It doesn't take much these days, y'all, to get tired. And then we could just go home and sew. Maybe we should just do that. Okay, see you back there. Okay, I changed my mind. It, I was driving right by it, so might as well. Plus, Ulta Beauty is here, and I need mascara. So, I'm going in. Okay, so Joann's didn't even have the latest issue of this. So, here's the Volume 1 2024. So, maybe there's something in here that... I can find that will work. Okay, found it. I'm getting this one. Okay, so pattern, not cheap. 30% off at Hobby Lobby from $19.99 is $14. I would never, ever, ever buy a pattern for myself for that price but I will just be passing that expense on over to the person that will be paying me for this project and I got my beloved mascara from Ulta bad gal bang they now have it in waterproof which I like waterproof better it's not as smeary so 30 bucks but you know we like what we like, don't we? Okay, so where's my sunglasses? What did I do with them? I am going to head to the house this time. Yes, I am. So we can get quilting. So they recently cut all the trees down on both sides of this road and this is the road that I live off of. Um, they're going to widen it supposedly, put new electric poles in, you know the drill. And then when I get ready to turn in up here on my road, all those fields are going to be developed unfortunately I don't know if it'll happen sooner than later but kind of hate to see that happen but you'll see the fields they're normally sown in um, corn and soybeans and they may still be this year but right now they have that little purple flower all across those rolling hills that's really pretty
guess where I am time to sew so as I was telling you earlier I've been working on these the, actually you have not seen this this is that last block I was showing you on Monday that needed to be done so I did that this block usually this snow in the mist what was it I don't remember love in the mist that's what it's called uh, I looked it up online and it's usually in blue colors but there are some shades of pink that it comes in almost a red as well and I was looking at all the rest of my blocks and I really needed another pink in there so I went ahead and made mine pink so uh, I like this this is really cute really easy to make so <clears throat> I've got my two sides on it and then I'll put turn around and put the other two sides on each one and then I will figure out where they need to go in the quilt and then I don't know where I'll go from there I'll have to start putting them together I think they trimmed down to 17 and a half or something like that yeah 17 and a half I'll have to make sure they all measure that and that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to put you on time lapse while you watch me sew. So I wanted to show you, uh, I'm not using pens. And that's just the daredevil that I am. But to match these up exactly how, because they're wider than the actual block, I take my point and put it on the seam that's in the middle of my block. And if I don't have a seam in the middle of my block, I measure six and a quarter over because these are 12 and a half. And that's where my point would go at the six and a quarter. Here's an example of one that doesn't have a seam in the center. So I'm going to take my ruler and make sure that my point is six and a quarter into the middle of it. And another thing, when you're doing, th these are on the bias, these triangles are on the bias. So you want to have a very light hand with them and not manhandle them too much. Just lightly put your put your hands on there and you know, don't you know, stretch them out or anything. And they'll come out fine every time if you do that. I also check and see if I have any seam uh uh, points where you know you don't want to cut your points off if I have to widen or shorten the distance on the quarter inch seam I could do it from the other side which would be ideal but I want to make sure that my triangle is delicately dealt with and I can't do that if it's underneath Now for the other side. So you do your two opposite sides and then once those are all pressed open then you do your two other sides remaining. Okay, so I'm going to finish ironing these and then I will put the other two sides on all these blocks and then maybe we can lay them out together. Blue. 
Do you want to say hi? Say hi. Did I disturb your slumber? <laughs> These blocks are giant. So I have to um, trim them down to 17 and a half. So I don't have a ruler, like a big square ruler, big enough for this. The biggest one I have is 16 inches square. Um, so I'm just going to take this ruler and use the quarter inch... And I'm just going to go a quarter inch away from this and trim all the way around. So wherever my farthest point is all the way around, that's what I'm going to trim. So here we go. I did one already just to kind of test that out before I told you how I did this. And I also tried to take the edge of my ruler and watch to make sure that this is vertical with my seams. So you can find some of your, you know, your, your intersections on your seams and kind of line those up from top to bottom and then keep your quarter inch over here and then you can just cut off the excess and it's about like that and that's typical of on point patterns these uh, triangles that you add on like that these bias triangles they're uh, made bigger they have you make them bigger so that you can do this trimming thank goodness it would be very hard to get that perfect And there's my pile of trimmings. Reminds me of coconut. Wish it was. Oh, while I'm here, let me turn the camera up so you can see this. Let me just see if I can take you over there so you can see. There is Hazel's hat. But, as I said on Monday, I'm still working on the calculations for the last border that goes around it. Pretty cool. Okay, so let's go sew some more on the blocks. So I have all my blocks trimmed. Did I t even tell you that's a Moda done grunge dot? <laughs> I hope I like it. I like it so far. It kind of gives a little rusticness away from all of that pristine white, white on white that I used. And then, like I showed you, I'm doing this for the squares on the edge. So, what I have to do here is on the all four edges just sew this across here so i'll show one sew one and show you how that's gonna look i'm anxious to find out myself technically i should have a line marked on here however i have my seam tape on here which is so nice you never have to draw a line again. So I just put my needle down on that corner and then just hold my corner down on that red line and just keep my eyeball right here on that red line. And I've got so much stuff laying here. It's not wanting to slide very well. I probably should just go ahead and make these into extra half square triangles. So I'm going to go about, I don't know, I like to go about a half an inch up. So now all I have to do is cut between those two lines.
So there's my extra half square triangle that I can keep. And then this is the the a quarter of the center diamond. I think that's going to look good. I don't know. You can't see what I'm showing you. <laughs> so it is dinner time. I'm going to go and take care of that. And then I might come back later and sew some more of these on. And surely, surely, if I finish it Friday, you'll be able to see a finished quilt top. We shall see. Thanks for hanging out with me today. It was a lot of fun. And I hope that you will come back and hang out with me again on one of these videos. And we can do some more errands and run around like we did today. And as usual, do some sewing and quilting and all the wonderful things that we do in our sewing rooms. So thanks again. And I will see you back here on Friday. Bye. Oh, oh, oh.